what I'm talking about. Hello, Design Thinking Community. I'm just about to start the session, virtual ideation sessions. And um, as I see on my screen, many, many people want to join. We're at 86 um, people waiting in the waiting room. So I will now let them all in. So, hello, the first people are joining. Hello, hello. I see many, many faces. We'll be a very, very big group today. We'll be about 100 people. So, the first thing that I would ask you already maybe to mute yourself. I will also start muting everyone. Okay, still some people are there to join. And we are already 90 people in the meeting. Amazing. To be honest, I've never had that. I've never had such a big call, such a big meeting. The biggest that I had was um, 60 people so far. But this time we're much ahead. For me, it would be very, very nice also if you share your pictures, if I see your faces, your webcams. I muted yourself so that we don't have too many background noises. But when I see some faces, it's always nice because then I'm not talking in the dark, so to say. Um, yeah, hello everyone, we have an hour and I'm going to talk about virtual ideation sessions. My name is Julia Achert and I'm a consultant, as you see on that slide, um, in Austria. So in the middle of Europe and I'm there since um, six years, so consulting since six years in the field of innovation. I'm mostly big organizations but also a few smaller companies. Um, and everything around innovation, but a lot also on design thinking and um, lean startups. So everything that has to do with human-centered innovation. And I was thinking what could be interesting to talk about today. What is the thing that we experiment most um, at the moment? And this is um, how you can bring ideation sessions in the virtual room. Um, yeah, I have some slides that I want to show you, but I also have some interaction and we'll see how that works since we're so many people. Some tips for the participation. The first thing I did for, your, for you, so to say. So every one of you is muted. Um, maybe I will later on ask a few people to speak up because it's an interactive session. And then please unmute yourself, but normally stay muted. That would be nice. Um, feel free to use the chat whenever you have a question. I'm not sure if I can answer everything during the session since we're so many people, but latest at the end. Or if you have a really, really important question that you need to raise in the middle of the session, then you can also raise your virtual hand when you go to participants and next to your name, you see the small symbol of raising the hand. Yeah, um, why do we do that session? Well, normally we sit all together, we mingle, we talk, especially when we create ideas. Now we do that. So we sit in front of our laptops and we look into kind of like one screen and still we should be creative. And something like this should happen. So this is normally how results of ideation sessions uh, look like when we do them with clients. So you know the obvious post-its, so we use a lot of post-its. Um, pens, you see flip charts, and um, people are really um, creating many, many ideas. In the virtual world, there are um, some restrictions, so to say, although there are already um, kind of like many tools out there um, that make it possible also to brainstorm on collaboration tools like Miro or Muro. Um, yeah, but before I go ahead, ah, I see someone wants or already to annotate, so maybe I should um, not allow you to annotate, <laughs> otherwise my slides will be kind of like totally a mess in the end. But uh, since you want to interact already, I'll give you something to interact. I don't know if you know Mentimeter, but please take your phones that are hopefully next to you somewhere. Um, go to www.menti.com and use the code that you see up here. So there is um, a six-digit code that is asked for um, to kind of like enter Mentimeter and to be able to make the voting. So I see now that someone raised the hand. I'll have a look who raised the hand. But well, the hand is already down again. 
So, whoops. I see already voting's coming in. So we have many people who say the current weather situation in your home office is sunny. Some say it's partly cloudy, no rainy and stormy, which is very nice. Um, and this is kind of like just the first question to let you interact with Mentimeter. Um, just a question, um, just yeah, a little thing to warm up. And then the next question will be on the topic of um, virtual ideation as well. I realize now it's really, it's really amazing if you have so many people in the call. I see one face, which is really, really nice. So the person, whoever it is, I don't see the name, please keep up your kind of like your, your webcam. It's really nice for me to see something. Yeah, and um, 42 people already kind of like are in Mentimeter and could vote. Um, I will bring up now the next question for the ones who voted already, and it's going to be the same code. So if you're just in the going into Mentimeter, you can still do that. Because the much more um, interesting question for me whoops, would be the following. So the next one is a scaling question. I'm going to talk an hour about um, virtual ideation. So it's really interesting for me to understand what your experience level is when it comes to facilitation of ideation sessions. On the one side, it's I'm a newbie, never facilitated something like this, just wanted to see it. And on the other scale is I'm an expert. And I see already we have total bandwidth from you're really a newbie to you are an expert. Um, so I'll try to kind of like bring something for everyone. So start right from the beginning, start easy, but then also always bring some hints for maybe the experts. So something interesting to see. Okay, 47 people, 48, okay. I don't know if you know Mentimeter, um, we use it a lot also in virtual workshops, especially when the groups get so big, because it's so hard to kind of like um, let people talk in a group with 100 people, but still some interaction is sometimes nice. Elisabeth, you have, you raised your virtual hand, which means you really have an important question. Please speak up. Or maybe you just wanted to try the virtual hand, which is also fine for me because then I'm going on. Yeah, so um, virtual ideation. How do we bring those ideas, that, that creativity in the virtual world? Um, and why do we need to bring it in the virtual world? Um, a very nice study that I found um, some, kind of some years ago about um, ideation and creating ideas is the following. Ideo, the company that you most probably all know, um, they did a study on how many ideas they need in order to have innovations in the end. Um, you know, idea they are kind of like working on innovations for companies. So one of their projects was um, to come up with a new toy, a board game. And they documented that they had 4,000 ideas documented. 230 of them were then developed in the end. 12 were sold and two were successful. So to have really successful innovations out there in the field, you need a lot of raw material. And that's why we all use that post-it stuff. And that's why we really do sessions on creativity because it's not always the first idea that is the innovation in the end that is really successful. So somehow we need to bring that now also in the virtual world when we kind of like need to work like this together. And I told you already about, um, you know, Mural maybe because also the Design Thinking Campus using it. This slide here shows Miro. So there yeah. are a lot of tools out there um, who... Julia? Question. Yes, someone speaking. Yeah, quick interruption. Celia speaking on behalf of some more people. You've yeah. got a window open that's a WebEx reminder which is overlapping and you're sharing oh, what you're okay. sharing. Thank so you. that would help tremendously, okay? Thank, Thank you. you so much. Keep going. <laughs> Okay, so um, the mirror bot that you see here helps really to make um, brainstormings more interactive. And I'm not going to talk about the technical details now because this is something where you can see so much um, kind of like also on YouTube. But what I wanted to talk about today is how do you facilitate such sessions? So what is maybe an easy creativity method? And our um, first thought is when you go virtual, come back to the basics and start easy. So don't take the most complicated um, creativity tool, but start with an easy one. And the easiest that I wanted to share with you is the one to all structured brainstorming. So it's a very, very easy method um, that I want to experience with you. So not just talk about it, but experience it. And that might be a challenge because we're 100, but we still try to do it. And we will use for that also the breakout room functionality of Zoom for the ones who know it. For the ones who don't know it, you will be surprised. 
Structured brainstorming one to all means we have a question and we also have a questioner in this session. It's the red one down here. And to this, we want to brainstorm. And a normal brainstorming would be we have the question and I would like, I would ask you kind of like to jump in with your ideas and just tell me your ideas. But since we're so many people and it's virtual, no one knows when to talk, we need to structure that now a little bit. The first step of one to all is one own suggestions. So I will give you now two minutes and the task will be take a pen and a pencil that is next to you somewhere. Or you can also take your phone because you can type in your phones and take two minutes of silence and brainstorm to the question. And the question is, how can we make sure that participants of an online meeting keep focused and don't start doing other stuff on the side? Because we know that when a meeting is not so good, then we start doing emails and so on. So what can we as a facilitator do that that doesn't happen? And when you brainstorm now, the more the merrier. So write a long list of all your ideas. Two minutes time and then we go in the next step. Okay, we are about at two minutes, so I'm starting to speak again. That was now the first step of the structured brainstorming that everyone can make up their mind. Second step now from one to all means I will put you, uh, going to the next slide, I will put you in small groups. We will not do duos today because we're so many people, but we'll do trios. So I will try not to set up 33 breakout sessions at the same time. We'll see if Zoom is able to manage that. And in that breakout sessions, um, the task will be that you exchange with the other two people that you will meet in the breakout session about your ideas. You have 10 minutes time for that. And in the 10 minutes, try to exchange that everyone can talk, but also make up your minds what three ideas that you had all together then after the 10 minutes discussion you want to bring in the plenary to the whole group and of course we will not be able to let every small group talk because we're so many but be aware it could be you so really make up your minds and i will ask them a few people that come back from uh, the breakout group to really um, share their ideas so that we have something to work on okay i will try now to put you in um, just setting it to 10 minutes. I will do nine minutes and you will see a countdown. So after nine minutes, you have 60 more seconds time. And let's start. Okay, it seems to work. The first people are getting in the breakout sessions. The last ones are with me in here. And the last one. And now I'm alone. Alone, I'm still going to keep talking um, because I know we're kind of like we're recording it. So it's always a bit strange if uh, you don't hear me talking. And it looks like that most of the breakout sessions worked. I'm just checking. If everywhere there is kind of like a second person and I'm seeing now a few people are not in a breakout session yet. Mohamed, why are you here with me in the main session? Can you hear me? Okay, now he's gone. Now he might be in the session. 
Wow, that's really amazing also for me to see what Zoom is already able to do, to be honest. 100 people and we have 33 breakout sessions. I'm really curious what the people will tell when they come back in the main session. Katharina, Katharina, you're back in the main session. And Katrin, some people are coming back, so I need to check. Victor, Katrin and Katharina, one of you, because you're with me in the main session now. Did you um, kind of like, did you lose the connection to the breakout sessions? Okay, now Victor is back again in the breakout. No. Okay. Katrin, Katarina, you're still with me in here. Ah, okay. So breakout session 15 is now empty because you're here with me. Hello. Hi. Hello, Julia. Hi. Hi. Someone asked me for help out of a breakout session. <laughs> yes. So we were three, and then one person left immediately, and then the other one is not um, responding in any way. So you're alone right now. Yay, I'm alone. <laughs> you come back to me in the main room, and we say, okay. Okay. okay how do, so I just leave the breakout room, and then I. You just. Okay, leave. perfect. 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 Okay. Peter, can you hear me? You're here in the main session with me. What do you do here? You should be in a breakout. Hey, Julia. Uh, nice to meet you. Or nice to see you again. Uh, I don't know. I joined the breakout <laughs> session. Sorry? Have you been in a breakout session? Yeah, I've been there. And uh, at first we were three people inside. And I turned on my camera and uh, my microphone. And yeah, first a lady turned on her camera and then she went out and oh. I stayed there with uh, another person yeah. who did not, who like, we stayed there for a few minutes and then he basically just left. Oh, so okay. I decided, decided to leave as well. Oh, okay, okay, good. Then just stay with me here. Breakout sessions will anyhow be um, over in a few seconds. It's really an amazing yeah. try for me. 100 people is crazy. <laughs> Never done that. And the chat yeah. didn't work at all like 100. <laughs> but we'll manage somehow. I'm sure it must not be easy. But yeah. Uh, yeah. That was You're it. doing really well. Oh, thank so you. <laughs> no worries. We'll try. I, I think many of us are here for the meta learning, so exactly. <laughs> we'll probably do things like this on our own later on. It's a really cool experiment. So I'm yeah. just making a few names that I know whom to ask them. Hmm. So we need four groups. Whom else? Tony. Tony, I can ask. Martista. Um, Peter, did you have ideas that this is what I didn't get now? Did you discuss a bit? Uh, no, we did not no. get to discuss because I don't, I don't know, maybe the other people's cameras and microphones were not working, maybe then we did not get to say one word. You did not get to say one word. Well, luckily you can talk yeah. to me. Yeah, well, I have a few ideas. Uh, okay. The first one should be like, as I said before, to... I might ask you then later when the groups are all back. So you're my okay. backup, so to say, if no one else has something from the person that I ask for Sonia. Okay. And now, let's see. Okay, they have still three minutes time in the breakout sessions. 
Okay. Um, if you have three minutes, may I ask a question? Of course, of course, go ahead. Um, I was told that in Microsoft Teams, this kind of breakout is also possible. I, so far, I did not find this function. Is it similar like here or? No, it's not similar. Um, in Teams, you can do it via channels. Unfortunately, it's not that intuitive like in Zoom. That's why we all <laughs> like Zoom so much. Um, in Teams, it would mean um, that you need to upfront prepare channels for each call, and then the participants need to click themselves on the channels that they should go into. So the ah, okay. on the side, but at the participant side, and that makes it a bit more difficult if the group is not so experienced. Ah, okay, but good to know, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks. And this is why we prefer Zoom so much right now. And unfortunately, Zoom has all those security issues. So, so many exactly. times, oh my God, we can't use it. So. Exactly. Oh. With a company, uh, no way. <laughs> that's I know, I that's know. also why I asked if, if you have experience, because yeah. I tried it last time. I had also a big, big, big design thinking workshop and uh, wanted to do this breakout and it was not working so far. Yeah. So good. But then it was uh, um, how I have done it uh, was right. So that's exactly how you yes. explained it. Yeah. Exactly. So let's see. They have now one last minute. Any other question from the ones who are already with me? Again, we have one minute. What's also really crazy for me is that I all the time see the waiting room popping up because there are still people waiting outside and I can't leave them in and it doesn't stop. Oh, okay. So the first ones are coming back from the breakout sessions. I hope you could discuss a bit. I just realized it would have been better to make bigger groups because some people couldn't talk and then it's Stupid if you're alone in there, but it's a try. As we said, it's an experiment. Okay, but more and more people are joining. I'm having a look in 16 seconds, everyone is back here. So I will share my screen again to show the slides. Okay. So, okay, in two, one, zero okay everyone should be back by now so that was the first um, very interactive um, test that i wanted to do how do the breakout sessions from zoom work in such a big group and i saw some people signaling they could talk with others which is nice because of course now we want to share some of the ideas so after thinking alone for two minutes discussing in a small group in duos or trios or also a little bit bigger the next step we know is kind of like bringing the ideas in plenary, so all. Normally we don't do design thinking workshops with 100 people. Um, so I will try now to um, make it a bit like it would have been a smaller workshop. And what I prepared is an idea board where four groups, four breakout groups could now bring their ideas and I would kind of like write them in. Of course, in a real workshop, you could use a shared document so that people in the breakout sessions write their ideas. For now, I will type for you. And I wrote down some names and I will try now. So please really um, listen to me if your name is called. And if your name is called, please unmute yourself and tell us your three top ideas. The first one would be Ilona in Stuttgart. Ilona in Stuttgart. Hi, Please. I'm yes. there. Hi, perfect. It works. <laughs> so we, we lost someone, but we were two, so we could discuss. And perfect. our um, three top ideas are um, to, to give people uh, tasks, so to keep them busy, basically, that they really mm -hmm. have something to do. Mm -hmm. The second one was to, um, to have a kind of points of rewards, something like prizes people mm -hmm. can gain if they are very active. Mm -hmm. And the third one was, um, yeah, a bit more, yeah, this third one was to just uh, crash Outlook so that they cannot read emails. Yeah, crash Outlook. Perfect. Sometimes we need to be a bit more radical. That's good. Next group, um, Hoda Mostafa. I wrote down your name. Can you unmute yourself and tell us about your ideas? Sure. Um, Perfect. Our first our first idea was, again, we were two, so we had a lot of time. Okay. Um, our first idea was to have um, participants deliver, have like mini deliverables that are visible that they can share with everyone and to get rid of minutes. So we're going to kill minutes of meetings. <laughs> <laughs> deliverables that yeah. they share like this? 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and to try and always have a co-facilitator or a co-host mm -hmm. and to delegate responsibility to others. Or co-host and delegate. It looks that you all don't want to work. You're all delegating. Which is <laughs> and the third idea. And the third idea is to have just something similar to what you did, to have a little bits of group work. Mm -hmm. so that people are busy again For and productive meetings keep them busy okay perfect then i would like tony bautista or baptista i'm not sure now what i wrote down tony can you speak yes up? yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> um so i'm i'm noticing there is some overlap here mm -hmm. um so i was in a breakout room with sarah um and so we we came up with the same thing. So with regard to the mini deliverables, mm -hmm. um, basically having tasks for people where there is an outcome that they either have to present to the group or show mm -hmm. um, to the group. Uh, also along the lines of uh, that asking questions, but calling mm -hmm. on random people. So basically people just kind of have to be on their toes and, um, and paying mm -hmm. attention. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those were the, the two that we kind of came up with. And then um, just also interacting with the audience or your participants. Um, so whether it's, it's asking questions or just um, getting people to give their opinions or feedback on things that were discussed. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Perfect. And the fourth group, um, Elvis, Elvis Mare. Is Elvis with us and can speak up? Okay, so our group decided that uh, we should have, uh, first of all, feedback. So you could have like a poll uh, in and out uh, the, the sessions. So mm -hmm. you get kind of an idea of the views, what people are saying. Uh, the other idea was to have um, more activities during the, the, the sessions, uh, but also have it interactive. So you can actually see what people are doing. So let's say it's a brainstorming session. We could have a whiteboard like Myro, you mentioned, mm -hmm. where everyone's actually interact at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the like this idea of the breakout sessions, also one of our ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I guess within that, having more of them yeah. would, would, in, would encourage um, would encourage more participation and more engagement. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Well, um, those were four groups. And of course, we would need to make now 33 to let you all talk, but just for the sake of the experiment. So um, after the kind of like when you come back in the plenary in that one, two, all brainstorming session, um, you let the people name their ideas. And what we had now is a lot of overlap. Um, how can we get rid of the overlaps? Well, one way I had to get rid of um, when I do normally the brainstorming session, um, I let the people during the breakout sessions um, work in a shared document. So what they see during the 10 minutes is also kind of like what other people are typing in. And then I say, okay, it's already there. Then let's take another idea of ours that we want to bring. So then you normally don't have that many overlaps. And of course, as well, when you use something like um, Miro, I have it in here. You can also prepare Miro templates. Um, Elvis, I'm muting you again because I have background noise, but it's fine. And um, kind of like you prepare in Miro some templates and people can kind of like on the same spot work in and you see the ideas of the others and you can also build on the ideas of the others, which is nice. Because of the 100 participants, I couldn't really provide you with a shared document now. Um, that's why we let it like this. And then the next step, what you can do is, um, we have some ideas now, so what do we do? A good brainstorming always closes a bit as well, you know, that's kind of like in the end, you need to decide what are really the good ideas that we maybe kind of like evaluate further or that we decide to do. So um, a very easy way what you can do um, with a PowerPoint slide is I prepared some dots down here. And you see in every field, there's a number. So I could ask you now all, and we can do that. So I ask you all, um, what is your favorite idea? Which one would you rate and highlight? Because you would really like to do that the next time. Choose the number, the gray number that you see in the field of the idea and put it in the chat. 
So this is what we did in the last brainstorming session. Of course, I didn't have 100 participants. Now chat might explode. Um, but I had uh, 12 participants. That's why you see also 12 dots down here. And then we really voted. So what I did is I really took the dots and I put them on the ideas that got the votes in the chat. And in the end, we saw kind of like um, which ideas were the best. And we really decided kind of like how to proceed with those ideas. That would be a really, really low tech um, variation that you do it in PowerPoint. When you do it in Myra or Muriel, of, of course, you can do it way more sophisticated and nicer. But um, I'm a consultant and I have to work with a lot of clients and many clients say, please, not any new tools. Just show us a PowerPoint and we'll try to use post-its. So I also wanted to show you that low tech variation. Yeah, um, but we all know and we also saw it with those ideas here and um, sometimes to be really creative we need some triggers and um, when you're used to working with uh, brainstorming tools then you might know the logic of working with triggers it means that you give your brain another thought that it can connect to because if you have an easy question and we had now a really easy question then the first ideas that we get are kind of like old ideas or random ideas that everyone kind of like knows we have still some kind of like interesting and radical ones, but in a brainstorming, of course, in an ideation session, we want to have more of the radical ones. We want to have kind of like really creative ones, ideas that we that are maybe not even doable now, but maybe in a few months they're doable. So a bit more of variation. And how can we do that? Um, we can do it with triggers, using triggers. And short explanation what is meant by triggers. Um, there's this nice saying from Leonardo da Vinci, Give a human mind two unrelated thoughts and he will feel the need to connect them. So you have two thoughts and our brain connects it. When I, for example, say beer and bar, your brain connects those two. And you see a picture in your head where you sit in a bar and drink beer, maybe. If I say space and spaghetti, it gets a bit more tricky, maybe. And your brain needs some time, but still a picture might pop up because this is what our brain really does. It tries to connect those two and it works until it has a connection. And there was a research done even um, by Vera Birkenbiel, a very, very intelligent woman. And she found out that it takes about 90 seconds time for the brain to connect two thoughts that are very far away from each other, so to say. And this is why it's so important to also give ourselves a bit of pondering time when we're kind of like ideation when we're kind of like creating ideas. So if there is a tricky question and we think about it and after 10 seconds we say, well, I don't have any ideas, then we need to work harder and give our brain a bit more time. This is also why some people always say, well, under the shower, I have the greatest ideas. It's not the shower, but the brain had time to work and to think and to connect the thoughts that they have in mind. Yeah, and um, when we use triggers in ideation sessions, then you can say one thought is the problem or the question that we want to solve and the second thought is the trigger i will show you then in a second what a possible trigger might be and the connection between those two are the ideas and we all know it from one problem and one trigger there can be multiple ideas so when you're really used to working with triggers then it really boosts your creativity yeah um and what can you use as triggers so to say so everything that is good for associations so it could be random pictures, as it says here. I could just show you a picture like this and say, okay, you know, we have the question, how can we, ke how can we keep um, people involved in online meetings? And this picture, what comes up to your mind? And you know, this is a bit more of a crazy picture, so maybe your brain needs some time, but maybe something pops up. Other things that you can do um, in some brainstormings, it makes sense to think about, okay, how does an other industry do it? So how does, um, for example, how do school teachers do it? Would be kind of like an association that you draw, it's a trigger. Or you can use to some questions, for example, business models to come up with ideas. You can use technological trends and you can also use innovation heroes. Maybe you've heard about that method um, that you say, okay, how did Albert Einstein or how would Albert Einstein solve that idea? Or how would Lady Gaga solve that idea? Or whoever comes to your mind. So you can use really different kinds of triggers. Um, and how we work with that, I would like to show you here. 
So this is also from a brainstorming session um, that we did um, kind of like a week ago, where um, we felt the need to bring in some triggers to, to kind of like get the people out of their normal thinking. So the question is the same that we had before. So sometimes it also makes sense to make multiple ideation rounds. And then we gave the participants a trigger like this one. And we said, okay, now you have two minutes time to come up with an idea to this question using this trigger. So when you look onto that picture, what comes up in your mind? For example, an idea like this, well, every participant defines a circle around him or herself as playground for online meetings and is not allowed to leave the meeting at the playground during the meeting. Could be an idea that pops into your head and could be even a valuable idea because we know how easy it is to mute ourselves and start cooking in the kitchen while a boring online meeting is on, so to say. So this is how you could use it. Um, and you see here, that was the idea board in our session. So we had multiple rounds with different triggers and we had different teams. So we were using the breakout sessions again. We said, okay, guys, this is not a trigger. You go in the breakout sessions and I'll show you maybe here. Um, what we did is we said there is a yellow team, there is a red team, there is a kind of like purple team. And we had a shared document so everyone could work in kind of like the same document um, every team on one slide. And then we came back together and I just quickly copied the results in here, so to say. So also way kind of like how to, how to brainstorm kind of like that a bit better. And this is also something that I would like to try with you now. So we'll do one round. The only restriction is we don't have the shared document. So the task will be that you just brainstorm for two, three minutes. And when you come back, you raise your hand, your virtual hand, when you really had a great idea. And I'll make now the groups a bit bigger since I understand that some people can't really speak and then the trio is maybe too small. So I'll set up now new sessions. What is, is the exact question again? The exact, the question um, will, I show it to you, sorry. Or I hope it's not, yeah, then it's here. So the question is going to be the same. How can we make sure that the participants keep focused so we don't use another question, but we want to have now more radical ideas to exactly this question. And um, before I send you in the breakout session, well, this is not, yes, I will show you the trigger and important this because in the breakout session, I can't show you the picture again because you're in there alone. Take your phones and make a picture of the trigger so that you have it with you in the breakout session, okay? I will show it to you in a second. I'm just setting up first the breakout sessions. So, one second. We make now 25 sessions, 26. Yeah, that might work. 25 and we'll say it just lasts two minutes and then you have the countdown that you can stay a little bit longer in if you want and now what i will do is i show you the trigger so this is the trigger that you should brainstorm to the picture shows um, a nice area oh did i already start the session no not yet um, so you see the picture where it says we waited 30 minutes, no service with ketchup. Make a picture of that trigger so that you have it in the breakout session. And I'll send you in the breakout session and you have three minutes time to come up with a really cool new idea to our basic question. How can we make sure that participants stay? I, unfortunately, I don't see the question because the waiting room is keeping me busy here. Um, that the participants keep focused and don't start doing other stuff next to the sessions. Let's go. And if anyone needs help in a breakout session, you can write me a message and then I'll jump in your session. I'm starting the sessions now and you should be able to join them.
Maiken, I can't see you anymore. I can still see you with me. And Ludwig as well. Talk to me if something didn't happen. Well, there was no one in the room, so... I there was no one in the room. No. Okay. So then I will bring you in a different room. I will bring you in the second session. Thank you. And Mara in the third session. Oh, well, this is not so easy. Breakout session. Some are working, some are not working. Hi, Letizia. Hi. I, I waited, but I was only the only one in the group. So You were the only one in the group. I'm just saying it. It seems that some people, where do I find you now here? In which group were you? Can you remember that? Uh, perhaps 15, but I'm not sure. 15, maybe. Oh yes, somehow something didn't work with the group. So, but if you want. Um, okay, it's just one more minute. So let's let's wait for the last minute. Maybe you have also a great idea since you saw the trigger. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can write down some ideas. <laughs> no, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so a few more seconds and then the rest comes back in. Okay, 30 more seconds, but some people are joining. Lisa, did it work now? You're still muted. <laughs> it worked very well, but I'm, uh, I have an idea, but I don't know how to raise my hand because I can't see. Ah! Right <laughs> okay, so when you want to raise your hand, uh, you need to go to Teilnehmer Verwalten, so where you to see the little man, and then you should see the whole participant list. And you need to look for your name and there it should say on the side, raise your virtual hand. Where's the little man? Ah, no, where? Participant. Um, it's ah, okay. where you mute yourself, camera on, and then next to there are the participants. Okay, I see. So, okay. advice. you're welcome. Okay, and I'm muting again for a second. Um, we're all back again. So, um, let's hear. Who wants to give us a great idea? Who had a great idea? Raise your virtual hand, please. Let's hear kind of like a few ideas. Lisa, you're the first, your idea. <laughs> okay, so I was inspired by the ketchup and uh, was thinking about the doodling that everyone is doing when they're on the phone or meeting. Mm -hmm. So you have to submit your doodles and then there's a competition of the doodles. And then you can also maybe discuss when someone was doodling something great, maybe they were not so paying attention. Ah, perfect. Yes, yeah. sounds great. Of course, I could write it down, but I leave it out the picture now. We know how it works to write ideas down. Hi, Am, you raised your hand. What was your idea in the group? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Uh, we, well, following up on uh, what was just said, for us it was, uh, we said there's nothing happening. So also for us, we, like, for us, we said on a sad screen, don't, uh, don't keep the same screen for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, being engaging, the engaging, I think is a key word, but have a check in every 20 minutes, like the doodle, something like this. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, Alexander Yassin, I yes. hope I would pronounce it right. Yes, what Thank you, you yes. Okay, so the colors of the ketchup and the mustard reminded me of buttons. And I thought in this group, we had this idea to install some kind of community button. So mm -hmm. for everyone in the session to remind each other um to to be attentive so if i notice someone being on their phone or doing something else i can give them a little push yeah. and then it pops up on their on their desktop and um it should draw attention back to the session great so you would kind of like also ask the others to help that everyone else yeah exactly cool. and another idea was yeah. to install some kind of toolkit that kind of forces the participants to interact with the information in the session. So they always have to incorporate the learnings immediately. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Perfect. Let's hear Danish. Danish, you also raised your hand. So our group came up with a very extreme solution. 
So if anyone who is distracted, the software will detect it and they will send him a virus. <laughs> okay. Then, then, then we tone it down to something any less deadly. We said, okay, it will generate a pop-up that you are distracted, you're, mo you're opening different other tabs, yeah. go back to the session and continue. Yeah. Okay, perfect. You know that Zoom had kind of a functionality like this and they, they said, okay, no, now we take it out because it was also like a um, data security issue. But um, you could, as a facilitator, say, okay, I want to know who kind of like opened other windows and then that pops up, which is, yeah. But they kind of like get rid got rid of that, I think. Yeah, so of course we could go on kind of like here ideas and um, also write down the ideas, of course. So the idea of writing was now in the session a bit too hard for me to set up. Um, but I hope you got the ideas of the triggers, so to say. Um, I will then check in a second, kind of like also the thoughts that you brought up in the chat. Um, maybe just a quick summary from my side and then we can go on with some discussions as well. Um, for me, um, as a facilitator, um, I learned that when you're doing it the first time with participants, then go maybe back to the basics a bit when you do an ideation workshop. So do it simple and not too complicated because we know there are creativity methods that have many steps and many different things. Um, start with something easy. And the one to all is for us really the easiest one, but it has some psychological effects that are very important for groups. We don't just use it in virtual rooms. Um, it's always kind of like one of the first brainstormings that we do with every team. Because what happens is when you compare it to a normal random brainstorming where you have the question and then the people just shout out ideas, what happens? Um, the extroverted people, they bring a lot of ideas. The introverted people, they don't talk. And especially it's difficult if you have um, different hierarchies in there. If the boss brings an idea, then the trainee is really scared to also bring a maybe more radical idea. So this one to all has the psychological effect that first, in the first session where you say everyone thinks for themselves, everyone writes down ideas. Because for me, for example, it also happens when someone else brings an idea, I stop brainstorming by myself, but I reflect on the idea of the other person. And then if other people jump in with ideas, then it's really hard for me to focus on also brainstorm, so to say. So, and when I have a few minutes to write down my ideas, then I have my list and I can easily listen to the others. And that middle step um, between one and all that you go in small groups in duos, helps the introverted people if they have crazy ideas, because then they can say afterwards in the plenary, we had a really crazy idea. Instead of the need of saying, I had a crazy idea, I hope it's not too crazy. Because you already have one person in the breakout who thought it was great as well. So that's why this is the, the easiest and for us um, kind of like best brainstorming tool. And then when you feel safe with that, try to virtualize your favorite ideation method. So like we tried to bring our trigger, it's, for us it's called speed ideation, that we show a trigger and then we have multiple teams and the teams brainstorm on the same trigger to the same question and then they present it. We try to virtualize that. And maybe one thing that I wanted to show you as well is, this is how it could look like in Miro. I hope you see now my Miro screen. Um, we did it once in PowerPoint, um, the trigger brainstorming question or brainstorming tool and a second one in Miro because I had a company there who said we like to work with Miro. So what I did there is I used um, the 40 inventive principles. I don't know if you know them. If not, write it down because they're really great trigger list, the 40 innovation principles. Um, it comes out of the theory of trees. Uh, trees is um, the theory of inventive problem solving. It's another methodology kind of like you could say next to design thinking or next to lean startup out of the innovation. And those are 40 um, principles. And when I zoom in, we can also see some. So for example, the first one is oops, down here. Um, so the first one says dismantle or segment something. So I could also have raised this as a trigger and say, okay, we have our question, how to keep people engaged when we dismantle or segment something. And you need to come up with ideas or a second one, remove harmful parts. What is harmful in a meeting? And then think about what ideas come up. So those are also like really great triggers that we like to use a lot in ideation. And I had all the triggers up here. 
And then I had workspaces for the different teams. We had 12 participants, so we made three teams of four. Um, and I just said, okay, we go now in the first round. We have our question. Everyone gets now, tac, 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 trigger one in their workspace. And you write down an idea in your workspace to that question. And then you come back in the plenary and then we collect it on the idea board, which is kind of like basically the same that I showed you in kind of like PowerPoint. And this is then already a bit more playful. Participants like that it's kind of like, it's a new tool and a new gadget. And you can really think of every brainstorming tool. You can also think of how to bring the 635 um, to a virtual session. Um, you can do that with emails or also with a mural board. So there are lots of options. So start with the basics and then maybe come back to some more complicated if you want to try out and test. And now let's see if someone raised a question. That's the first time that I'm able to look in the chat. So how you should see the raise hand button, we have that. Is there a database with um, such fun pictures? There are a couple of um, collections that you can find online. Um, when you just Google random picture collection or picture association pictures, um, then you can find kind of like lots of people who, who put up their kind of like set. And I just downloaded ones with 40 of pictures. And in the six years of um, consulting, I didn't need any more. So that was kind of like enough. What about platforms where you can't use breakout rooms? Teams. Well, in teams, you can use breakout rooms. So when you have um, a design thinking team that works together and you have an ideation session, it just needs a bit more time to prepare. In teams, you can um, make different channels. So what you can make is when you have a two hour ideation session, you make in between, you make channels for every breakout session. And the only thing is that the participants need to click in the session. So it's not the facilitator in teams who sends the people in breakout sessions, but the participants itself. But if you have people who are used to teams, then it works very fine as well. What is the name of the book about the triggers? The innovation principles. Um, there are different books out there. What you should Google is just um, 40 inventive principles by trees. So for, whoops, can I type in here as well? So it's the 40 inventive principles by trees. And then you find many collections. There are also people who started to collect the 40 principles for software with different examples. Um, and there's a lot of kind of like also to read there, but big, big kind of like topic we could talk about there. Okay, any other questions that you would like to raise? Easiest would be now typing in the chat because I'm in the chat right now and I'm seeing it. Anything that you would like to know? We have a few more minutes. And while you think maybe what I'd like to do, of course, is that's the first time that I did a session with so many people, give me a little bit of feedback. So you can either now type in Mentimeter your feedback on the scale um, while others bring questions. Um, question that I got. Where did you write the name of the Google search? Hmm, what is meant by this? Where did you wrote the name of the Google search? I wrote it in the chat as well. Oh, I wrote it to Ilona in private. Sorry. <laughs> uh, wait a second. I'll send it now again to all of you. So this is what you should kind of like bring in. Um, how do you deal with cultural differences? Um, well, for me, it's um, always using methodologies like one to all, where not all the people kind of like are in the plenary and talking at the same time. So, for example, if you have Chinese people in a workshop or a meeting, they're like really introverted and they don't really kind of like, it's not easy for them to give feedback and to just speak up in a big group when they're not used to it. But if you have that one to all, then everyone is kind of like really in the process. So try to kind of like think of the most introverted person that you have in there and try to design the method for that person as well. That normally helps kind of like in all, all the directions. How about break? How many do you usually uh, do? You usually do and how long? Um, the shortest break that you should do virtually is 15 minutes, we found out. Um, if it's shorter, we always get the feedback. I was not able to make coffee, go to the toilet and give my wife kind of like a kiss. And in 15 minutes, that normally was always fine. Um, and the longest that I do without a break is normally one and a half hours, and then we do a break. Because that's kind of like, it, then it gets a bit annoying because people jump out because they need to go to the toilet. OK, 
Can you repeat the 40 principles? Ah, I did put that in. Still not in the chat, the 40 principles. Is that true? Oh my God, now I send it to everyone in the waiting room. It's crazy what is here. So I hope it's there now. <laughs> Sorry for that. And someone else even brought it up. Perfect. So the treesjournal.com is already the right source. You can click on this. What are the main disadvantages of the design thinking method? Pooh, um, that's a broad question. I mean, what we did now in this session is not design thinking at all. We just took the little piece of how to ideate. Um, for me, for me, pff, a disadvantage, the, the biggest uh, pitfall that you can fall into, I would say, when you do design thinking is, um, and you learn people kind of like to use design thinking, and they're working on challenges um, where they are also the customer. You know, sometimes we have those challenges that we work on topics where everyone as a consumer could be a customer. Um, and then sometimes in the trainings, I like to do that the people also kind of like um, interview each other um, to kind of like get first insights. And then every time when the person who works in a design thinking team is also kind of like a customer, then it's really hard to kind of like keep in mind that it's not just kind of like your opinion and your opinion is not the one um, kind of like reflecting everyone out there. So you need to go out and really do it. So what I kind of like saw is um, that many companies fail in doing design thinking right because they have the feeling, well, uh, kind of like we all have knowledge about the topic. So we just interview ourselves and we don't go out and kind of like really ask other people. And the ones in the design thinking team, so to say, who use the methodology, um, they are very often kind of like a bit, they have so many background knowledge and there's so much in their brain that they sometimes think a bit different than the kind of like customers out there on the street that you could ask. And the biggest mistake that you can make in um, kind of like ideation sessions is that you don't close it at the end. So in every ideation session, in the end, there must be a section where you say, those were our ideas from today, let's prioritize them. Let's highlight the great ones. And the best that you can do is then even make little concepts out of the highest rated ideas. Because after one week, you have no clue anymore what that person meant with this idea and that person meant with this idea. That's normally kind of like something. How do you facilitate all breakout sessions? Do you go from session to session? Um, no, um, when we have kind of like, when there is the need to facilitate a breakout session, there is the way either you kind of like bring in co-facilitators or um, yes, I jump from session to session. Then I really tell the people I'm bringing on the breakout sessions. And for example, I have a look which groups start with the ideas first, and then I'll jump in the sessions where people seem to struggle with the technology, for example. And then I really go from session to session, which is easy, very easy in Zoom and also easy in Teams because you see them in all the channels. Do you suggest any effective physical ideation methods to manage virtually amongst small teams? Physical, what is meant with physical ideation methods to manage virtually among small teams? I'm sorry, I, I'm hard having troubles to answer because I'm not sure what you mean. Vikram. Yes, Shota. hi. Yes, hi. hi. Uh, thank you for the wonderful talk. My question uh, uh, was related to are there any, uh, like generally we do workshops uh, and those are physical workshops. We do mm -hmm. a lot of ideation like body storming and all those things. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, and I feel that there's a big gap between this uh, doing ideation digitally and mm -hmm. what we do physically. So are there any effective methods that could be suggested that teams can do like physically or like for example do write their ideas on the whiteboard or like mm -hmm. the physical whiteboard <laughs> yeah yeah something well like that. yes i know um i have some people they experiment right now with writing here something and then having the iphone mm. there showing it um i never felt the need so far to do it because i had the feeling the tools like miro and moral it's not such a big gap to what you normally do physically I love, for example, normally in the real world doing brain walkings where you have questions in the room and people walk around. This is now really hard, but we also did it once that we said, okay, now you come to the next question. I will send you to the next breakout group, but you need to stand up before you go in and walk okay. different steps and sit back again. <laughs> That's the only yeah. thing that I could think of so far. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
I missed how to use Mentimeter. Can someone explain? Well, the easiest to use Mentimeter or to get it explained is just go to www.mentimeter.com. And it's super intuitive. You can log in for free and make the first kind of like votings for free. And they have tutorials that might be the easier ones. Um, yes, Sam wrote a very nice kind of like comment to me in private. Um, to the topic that I said before to design thinking um, what if people are really struggling with um, the task of getting out there bring in some customers in the workshop I totally agree Let's talk for the others some people jump out they say thank you um, can I explain a bit more about trees I know that's a lot and I will take um, a few minutes I can stay in a bit longer for the ones who are interested in telling you about trees. The session is recorded and will be available, yes. Um, thank you, I take that, this is great. Um, is it easy to reuse Miro canvases? Yes, that's super easy, there are a lot of tutorials in there. Um, and lots of thank you. Okay, then I just take two more minutes to discuss on trees and then we say bye. Um, so trees is um, a method that is um, or was made for um, technical problems. So like design thinking is for human centered challenges. Trees was made up for kind of like technical, solving technical challenges. Um, the whole methodology comes from Russia, from a man um, called Genrik Altschule. And he uh, researched patents, he was a patent officer. Um, and what he found out like with looking through 10,000s of patents was that um, there's some kind of like principles behind. So, Somehow, when you go through all the patterns, there's some, some pattern, so to say. And um, he took a lot of time, also during Cold War, he was in prison and he had a lot of time. So um, what he nailed it down to is those 40 innovation or inventive principles, as they're rightly called. Um, and what technicians do when they really use the methodology is when they have a technical problem, they have a look on all the 40 triggers, because one of the triggers will solve their challenge because it's really, um, it was an analytical research and there are not really more than 40. Some people wanted to say it's 42, but the two are sometimes kind of like, or somehow in the 40 already. So you can really use it as um, then an analytical brainstorming because one of the kind of like triggers will bring you to the solution. Since all of the patterns out there in the world kind of like are based on those. They're of course on a higher level, but that's why they are such a great trigger set for ideation. Yeah, thank you so much for your participation. It was such a great experience for me having so many people in the call never did that. I saw some smiling faces, which makes me always happy. That's my last tip. Whenever you do a virtual ideation session, everyone needs their camera on. Most importantly, because if people don't use their camera, then it's so hard for them to be in the session. And for you as a facilitator, it's crazy if you're talking in the dark. So always ask them to keep it on. Thank you so much. Have a great day and enjoy the next sessions. Bye.